Praise the Lord, somebody. I was speaking last Sunday on the subject of what next. I want what next to become the word for every ministry, for every life, for every family. In any area of your life, let this question begin everything. What next? What is your next pastor call? What is your next at the level of ministry? What are the next step? What is your next related to your family? What is your next? Prophetess Martha, welcome. What's your next? Related to your ministry. Related to your life. Related to your family. Heidi, what's your next? Related to your life. Related to your family. What's next? Jessica, what next? I want we live our life based on that. So we don't lose sight that this life is a race. And it's not just a race of the strong. It's a race for those who are on purpose, fulfilling the reason for which God has created you. We are not just in what next to do anything. We are in what next to do what God created us to do. We are not what's next to just wonder. We are what next to do things that will make our life count for eternity. What is the next God has for you? Let me put it that way. What is the next Bethia, Minister Bethia, for the worship? What is the next for the children's ministry? What is the next for the multimedia? What is the next for the protocol? What is the next for the evangelistic team? What is the next for the board? What is the next for the pastoral? What is the next? What is the next? And what is the next? The prophetic flow of Jacob is our stream that we have chosen to swim in. We do not want to do anything else outside of the streams of Jacob. God loved the platform of Jacob in such a way that he chose his platform to birth his own nation called Israel. He could have gone on the platform of Moses, but he did not use that platform. It's because Jacob has something that Moses didn't have. Jacob didn't have something that his father Abraham did not have. We have heard so many preaching that Joseph was a crooked man, that everybody believed that Joseph was crooked. Yet the Bible does not say Joseph was crooked. His name might mean crookedness or a cheater, but Joseph built a character that, contract, con that was con a contrast to the name his father gave him. In other words, regardless of your origin and how you were groomed by your family, there is still an opportunity for you not to live up to that. To do something different in life. More than ever, I'm seeing the standing before God asking, what did you do when I entrusted to you on this earth? Elijah, I counted your days and you live 120 years. After those 120 years, what did you do? Did you fulfill the reason for which I have sent you in the earth? Or did you chase after other things? What is the race you're running? Are you running the race that Hollywood said that is success? Or even a, a good friend said that's what is success? Are we running the race for which we were created? This basket is made to receive offerings. If I use it to begin to clean the floor, I'm abusing the basket. Because the basket was not created to clean the floor. There's many people on this earth and in the church who are doing things that people are clapping hands for them, yet they are not created to do it. As one man said, do not climb to the top of the hill or to the top of the ladder just to realize that you are on the wrong wall. Even though you are on the top and look down and say, oh my God, all this effort to make it on the top, on the wrong wall? I don't want that to be your portion. 
This life is once. Then come judgment. We don't have two lives. We have one life. In this one life, God had put people around you to motivate you, to provoke you for success, to add to you. One life, brothers and sisters. One life. Then come judgment. I don't want to stand before God even though I have access to heaven and realize that I have lived a life that was full of a lot of actions, but none of these actions were bringing glory to God. That will not be my portion and that should not be yours. And that's why I'm speaking these messages. We need to raise our level of awareness. In the Jacob prophetic flow, the Bible says that Jacob is stronger than Esau. It says that the authority of Jacob is more powerful. It commands more, has more influence than the one of Esau. Esau's system is weak. Jacob's platform is strong. And I told you in life, it is not the weight of the assignment of the vision that have been entrusted unto you that matters. It's how strong you are to fulfill it. And many people work hard to diminish the weight of the assignment. They remove things from it so it can be easy to lift up. That's not what counts. If you see that your assignment is overwhelming you, don't diminish it. Grow strength instead of making it weak. We are all faced with challenges. There's no human being sitting here under the sound of my voice and those watching that have no challenge. Because a destiny that has no challenge is not worth to be living for it. God used challenges to grow you and I. In fact, every time he want to raise you up, he will introduce you a challenge. That's why the challenge you're facing is not to destroy you. It is a sign that there's an uplifting that is about to happen for you. So don't run away from it. Grow strength. Face the day. Overcome. Jacob's system is powerful. Just Jacob is sell the presence. In other words, is sacrificing the present to secure the future opportunities. Esau does the opposite. Esau want to have the best car now. Esau want to have the best house now. Esau want to buy the best clothes now. Esau want to have the best meal now. He want to satisfy his present and he forgets about the future. That the difference between the people who rule this earth and those who have been ruled. Sometimes you need to suck it up for a day or two, in a month. You don't need to have it now. You need some time to suffer for a while. Then your release shall come. But any person who does not want to go through things will end up cheating in life. And when you cheap in life, it's going to catch you up. It's a matter of time. Don't be too amazed by the worldly people who denied Christ and seem so successful. It's a matter of time. What does it cost a man? What is the worth to a man? To win the world, to be on the top and lose his souls. Yet we think these unbelievers are so lucky. Look at them, what they are driving in. Look at where they live. Look at how much money they have. Hey, my God, I want my child to be like that. Nonsense. Because success without character is dangerous. 
Hallelujah, somebody. That's why Solomon said, I'd rather be poor and have good morals and a character than being rich and lose my souls. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want to teach you how to build strength so you can overcome and finish your race like Christ finishes race. Do you see the, the finishing of Christ, how intense it was? The more you advance in success, the harder and the higher the hurdle will be. It doesn't come easier. It becomes more difficult. You don't make it to the mountain smiling. It's only when you get there that you're breathing heavy before it, then you can smile. Life and success does not come easy. It doesn't come easy. Catch it too easy, you lose it too easy. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not just angry, I'm just passionate. Hallelujah. I'm passionate because I want my life to count for eternity. And I want your life to count. I don't want you to waste your life into some dreams that have no sense. Thank you, Father. Isaiah 37, 3 said, when the season of birth, birthing comes, they have no strength to deliver. We need strength to deliver the vision. We need strength to deliver the task. What God entrusts to us, we need strength. Everybody has their battle and the different natures. Don't think for a second that your battle is the hardest. Don't think for a second that your demons are stronger than other people's demons. Everybody has their demons and their opposition and their resistance. Everybody has their battle. Hallelujah. This is how we fight our battle. It will praise and thanksgiving in the house of the Lord. You can do it in your own strength just to let you know ahead of time. No matter how smart you are, bright, good looking, sharp, intelligent, all the futures, you can't do it on your own. You can't. Before I talk about how to build strength, I would like to talk about the strength leakers. Now, this is not Donald Trump talking, all right? <laughs> the strong leakers. The, the strength wasters, let me use that. Thing that wastes your strength. You are stronger than you think. As you are richer than you think, even though you have no account with Scotia Bank. But we are experts in wasting strength. So let me give you some liquors. Can I? So we can close it. Number one. Running aimlessly. Chasing after the wind is the waster of strength. Project the 1 Corinthians 9.26 from the NLT. So I run with what? Purpose in every step. In other words, no wasted step. Every step, there is purpose into it. I don't take a step, that's what he meant, without it taking me somewhere. Not wondering. Every step is purposeful. It's full of purpose. Hey, if you want to get to this speaker, don't take a step going here. It's still a step, but it's not full of purpose. It's like you are shadow boxing. Can you imagine following a shadow in boxing? You can show all your skills and everything you can do, pop out your muscles, but you can never knock out a shadow. In other words, this verse controls my life. I run with purpose in every step. 
If it does not have purpose filled, leave it alone. That's wasting your strength. I have an announcement. You are not made to be an expert in everything. Why do you do what you do? Where, what you do, where is it taking you to? Is there any purpose in your steps? Or is it just fun? Or oh, I see other people taking a step I'm taking too. Is there any purpose? Are you intentional in what you do? Do you sit down and calculate the cost before you decide or sign a contract? Esau signed a contract and he lost his birthright in the contract because he took steps without purpose. He was signing his birth right away, not knowing it. I like to ask sometimes people the question, you're doing this, why do you do it? What is the purpose embedded? What is the purpose that justifies all this effort and sweat? What is the purpose that justifies all this lack of sleep? What is the purpose that justifies all these expenses? What is the purpose that justifies that investment and contribution? What is the purpose that justifies that sacrifice? Or you just want to be busy? Be busy by taking steps that are purposeful, that can further you to where God wants you to go and what God wants you to achieve. I run with purpose in every step. He doesn't miss a step. I'd rather not take a step instead of taking a step that is purposeless. I'd rather remain still. I'd rather pause before I waste one step, one energy, one resource, one time, one hour, two months, this much money. Every step. I watch people in the earth. They are busy but not advancing. I mean, I mean busy with great skills and talents. But yet, they're in the same place as you find them two days, one year ago. What does that mean? They are just acting around. Listen, motion does not mean progress. In other words, they are taking steps. The only thing is they are taking steps with no purpose. That's not your portion. You can't live your life that way. That's not for you. You refuse that. That's not a part of your deal. Thank you, Father. Running aimlessly. Every time you're about to invest. Every time you're about to move. Every time you're about to do something, ask yourself, where is this going to take me? I will go further. What am I going to get that will profit me for eternity by doing this? David said, oh, they will kill Goliath. I can kill Goliath. But before he went on the battlefield, he said, tell me, what, let, I, I want to sign a contract here. I want to do a deal. But I want to know, what am I getting in this, right? They said, you will not pay taxes. Your parents won't pay taxes. And you will marry the daughter of the king. He said, I'm in. Even if I lose this battle, at least it was purposeful. Do you understand? 
It needs to be purposeful. When it's purposeful, you can risk everything. There is no work of faith without purpose. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Number two, liquors of strength beside endless pursuits, quarrels along the way. In other words, fight that does no matter. Quarreling is a waste of strength. Fighting that does not take you anywhere is a wasting of your strength. Not all debate should be debated. Not argumentation should be argued. Not every fight should be fought. But we are expert in wasting our strength by choosing the wrong battles, always quarreling. Disputing, fighting, it takes your energy, it takes your strength away. Quarreling disqualifies you from divine wisdom because the Bible said the one who quarrels is a fool. Is this battle you're in, is it worth it? Is it taking your strength away or is it giving you strength? What are you going to gain even if you win? There are some championship and some gold medal that will further you nowhere. It will just make you heavy with so many gold medals everywhere. Oh, my friend, you have a lot of gold medals. I won this. I won against my wife. I won against my brother. I won against my pastor. I won against. I mean, you won all these battles. Now your neck is full with gold medals. You can't walk anymore. Yet none of this gold medal has something that will count for eternity. Yet people clap you, wow, this man is winning every battle. But as far as God is concerned, you won none yet. You can win again, man. And waste your strength. Is it worth it? Purpose is so demanding. If you understand purpose, there are some battles you will not waste your strength and energy on it. But when a man and a woman is ignorant about purpose, he will waste the resources that were supposed to further your purpose. Wasting, quarreling, fighting, disputing, arguing, turning back against one another. After now, we pray, catch up prayers. I got to catch up now. Restoration. Oh, restoration. Oh, restoration. I got to catch up. There's nothing wrong to pray those prayers, but please, you can avoid those prayers and pray something else if you receive wisdom today. You will understand there are some tough battles you need to get out of that ring. Remove your gloves from that battle. It will not do anything for you that will please God. Even if people clap hands for you, and you can beat your chest and pull out your ego on the top because you just make your point. You just waste strength. It's a strength leaker. It's a strength leaker. I have decided a few years ago, I will not fight any battle to waste my strength. Win over me. You can win. Just win. It's okay. I, I'm a loser there. Yeah. Win. I don't even deserve the bronze medal because I raised the white flag before even the battle began. I just went like this. I surrender. Somebody say, I surrender. Please say, I surrender. Some of you need to surrender. Say, I want to win all the time. To have the last word all the time. And that specifically talking to husband and wife, hear my voice. Stop trying to win all the time. Raising the flag. It's no weakness. It's strength. Don't leak your strength by fighting battles you should not be fighting. Quarreling along the way. Genesis 45, 24. Genesis 45, 24. 
So Joseph sent his brothers off. And as they left, he called after them. Now watch the picture, right? Watch the picture. He sent them away. So now they are going away. And then Joseph get a revelation from God. And he called them, hey, 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 don't go that quick. They get scared again. Oh, my God, he changed his mind. They will lock us down now. Right? He sent them off. And then he called them after and said, don't quarrel about all this along the way. I'm speaking the same word to you sitting here and watching. Don't quarrel about all this. The, all this, put your own package in it. If it's husband and wife, don't quarrel about all this. Brothers and sisters, don't quarrel about all this. Ministry partners, don't quarrel about all this. Co-workers, don't quarrel about all this. Family members, don't quarrel about all this along the way. Because quarreling is a master delay. Quarreling will delay God blessing to you and your family. Quarreling will delay God blessing to your church and your ministry. Quarreling will delay God blessing to your business. I am warning you, steadfast will strength this morning. This is not a message for just the other people. These are warning from God and my heart is leaping that you will take notes. Because tomorrow you will not tell God that he didn't talk to you. He spoke to you with a sound voice. Don't waste your strength. It is needed to uplift the weight of purpose and the task God has given to you. These last 10, 11 days have been so tough for our family. And I give thanks to the man and woman in this house who stood up and full prayer and support of every sort. But I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters, I needed all my strength and my wife needed all her strength. If not, there's no way. There are some weight that life will swing at you. It's called curveballs. Those ones, they are not a part of the list that you can know. Even your prophetic antenna will not capture them. Now, if you're a waster of strength, when the curve a ball of life come your way, that you did not calculate in your assessment, that you did not see in your project management, you have no more strength left. That's why you got to carry strength in season and out of season. Because this prophetic journey of life has some surprises, and every surprise demands a release of strength to oppose it. To remove it so you can keep moving. Don't waste your strength. I said don't waste your strength. He said do not quarrel on the journey. Quarrel will delay you. Proverbs 17, 19 said whoever loves quarrel loves sin. In other words, wherever there's quarrel, sin is never far. And when sins come in, it brings condemnation upon your life. And when that come in, wisdom is uplifted. You act like a fool. When you receive that demonic grace of foolishness, you can no longer build. You can no longer advance. You begin to be blinded. You can't see anymore which way to go. You become lost wandering like Cain because he was a fool. He lacked quarrels. He committed the first crime of killing somebody, his own brother, because he was quarrelsome. And because he was quarrelsome, he lost his strength. He couldn't worship God anymore. He became a wanderer. When quarrel entered the life of a family, the blessing of the Lord became untouchable. Even though it might be there, it's become intangible. You can't touch it, you can't see it, you can't feel it anymore. Yet, you are blessed. But how come the blessing has no room to manifest because of quarrelsomeness? It's a strength leaker. And yet we pray for 
Oh, Lord, I need your strength. Oh, God, give me strength. You know, stop praying that because you're leaking. You need first to close the leak. Then the strength God gives you will profit you. Anything short than that, you're fool. Come on. If I'm holding here this like a basket and this is open, and I ask you to come and pour water in so that we can go water the plants, and every water you put in is, is falling down, will you continue putting it? Will you? Don't quarrel. I command you today to put an end to quarrels. It is delay that will come your way. Wisdom will be uplifted. Favor will be uplifted. God said to tell you, if you don't understand this, favor will be uplifted. Doesn't matter how hard you work and how smart you are, frustration will be your harvest. Proverbs 23 said, every fool is quick to quarrel. Every fool is quick to quarrel. And when a fool is fool, he has no wisdom. Therefore, he can build. Proverbs 24, 3 says, it is by wisdom that we build. A fool can build anything. He tears down his own house. Number three, Lika. The snare of chasing empty dreams. There is a snare of chasing empty dreams. Let me give you empty dreams. It feels good. When they tell you about an empty dream, oh, it feels so good. You can't wait to get into it. Because they make it look so easy. <laughs> you feel like I'm going to get rich right now. Money is coming. Money is coming. Hey, money is coming. Money is coming. What do you need to do? Brother, we don't need to do anything. This one is easy. It flows. Whenever people begin to tell you that you will be rich without doing anything, I'm telling you in the name of Jesus, it is a scheme. Be careful. Nobody becomes rich because he has a good sleep. Am I speaking to somebody this morning? There are empty dreams. People chasing after empty dreams. They move from one idea to the other idea, from one project to the other project, from one excitement to the other excitement, from one passion to the other passion. Yesterday is over, today is new. Their prayer is, you know what, God teach you always. You miss this, this one is coming. You've been doing that for the 20th time in one year. You just change project five times in a few months. Listen to me. You don't succeed by chance. There is no rise without a price. You have to pay a cost to get to the top. You don't become a CEO by luck. Are you hearing me, somebody? You see, these people we like to criticize because they are on the top there. Only when they are on the top, you can see them to criticize. Because the people underneath, you don't see them, so no critics. If they don't criticize you, you are still low. Okay, all right. <laughs> one of my daughters, one day they criticized her. She was so shocked. She felt like somebody criticized me. She was broken. I said, uh, you shocked? I didn't do anything wrong to anybody. I said, welcome to the ministry. <laughs> you don't need to do anything wrong to anybody to be criticized. You are criticized because you have authority. Donald Trump is criticized because the president of the United States. If you don't have criticism, stay in your little corner. Don't let CNN knows about it. Just be incognito. God knows you. Men doesn't need to know you. Go on your island. Even on the island, the fish will criticize you. So you better get used to it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can I read a verse for you? Okay. Proverbs 28, 19. Proverbs 28, 19. He who tills this land will have plenty of food. But he who follows empty pursuit will have poverty in plenty. You are rich. 
regardless. You're either rich in the good or you're rich in plenty. Somebody needs to be rich. Somebody has to be rich. Everybody's rich today. You are either rich with plenty food or you are rich with poverty in plenty. It's all plenty. <laughs> There's nobody who doesn't have plenty. That's the only thing you can accuse God about, all right? Everybody has plenty today. It depends on what are you plenty of. Are you hearing me? You don't get rich by chance. All those easy schemes to make it is a strength waster. You are wasting your strength. Oh, you do this, you do that, in five months, million, you will be a millionaire. If you do, yeah, yeah. What do you mean? Just a millionaire? Ah, you mean. Oh, the heart begins to leap. It's called hope defers, make the heart sick. You dream. It's like people playing lottery. My dad make it really clear. He's the statistician. He is a really smart guy. He said to me, he said, you know, you know why people play lottery? I say, yeah, because they want to win the jackpot. He said, okay, there's one chance out of sometimes 40 millions. The probability is so low, but yet they play. And that's why it costs only $1 or $2. So you feel like, eh, doesn't cost much. But imagine 40 million people who think the same thing like you. They just gathered 40 million. More than the jackpot that's 10 million. And he said to me, they pay one dollar so for 24 hours they can dream whatever they want. <laughs> they dream whatever they want, including put the husband out, move to Italy, <laughs> buy a new house, live in the boat. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? In Jesus' name, I forbid you to play lottery. It's not godly. Yeah. <laughs> they play for one dollar 24 hours. Him, you will see who I am. I'm going to show him. They thought I would not make it. I'm going to show him. I'm going to buy this car. Him, my husband, he talked to me like that again. He's done. I'm done. I'm moving to Italy. I'm going to buy a boat on the river. 40 million. Ah, we have, that's why some of you will never have 40 million because you will be a calamity to your family and to the nation. <laughs> You will, you will start the day of judgment sooner than it's supposed to. <laughs> you will line them up and give them the day of judgment. You, out. You, out. You, out. You, out. Wait. Stop pursuing money. I went to my massage therapeutic physiotherapist. She's from China. And she loved money. She really loved money. And then I said, you, I can see you love money. She said, oh, do you know that? <laughs> I heard you were a pastor. She thought it was the prophetic gift flowing. I said, no, this one I don't need prophetic. I can look in your eyes and see. Whenever I'm about to pay, her eyes open like that. <laughs> and I tell her, do you know what is the secret for money? When I say, do you know what the secret? All the massage therapists people run to come and listen. <laughs> it's giving me a chance to tell them about Jesus Christ, that the secret for money. Hallelujah, somebody. And I said, money is like a pigeon. When you pursue it, it runs away from you. Some of you sitting here under the sound of my voice, stop chasing after money. Money doesn't like that you chase after it. You are scaring all the money they run away from you. Okay, I will say that again. I said, you're chasing out the money, scare the money. The money feel like, no, 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 no. This guy is too hungry. I don't want to go in his pocket. <laughs> he will spend me or he will squeeze me. It's a strength waster to chase after money. To want to be rich the next day is a strength waster. Frustration will overtake you. Okay, pastor, show us in the scripture. First Timothy 6, 9 to 10. Read this with me. We just know the last portion. I will tell you what it says. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruins and destruction. Leave that verse there. Don't change it. Stay there. 
Did, did you just read this? It's New Testament talk. I will say it again. Those who want to get rich, chasing after money, they fall into a temptation, a trap, and into many foolishness. You know, when people begin to be hungry for money instead of being hungry for God, you cannot have any sense to talk to them anymore. They don't listen to sense. They don't listen to truth. They don't listen to wisdom. They are becoming possessed with the money love. Nobody can talk to them because they think they have found a way of success just on your own, not knowing they are harming. They are, they're going to be harmed very soon. Destruction is coming their way. They will plunge into ruins. The next verse, verse 10. For the love of money, that's the one we know, is the root of all kinds of evil. All kinds of evil. All kinds of evil. I told you, my dad told me when we were younger, I was 20, 21, my dad told me, I used to be such a frustration guy, frustrated guy. I see these rich people, I say, ah, you know what, he just stole the money. Because you, you, you're so poor, you jealous them somehow, right? So, yeah, nah, nah, this is not real. How can he get that money? And then one day, my dad listened to me and he said, son, don't mock the rich people, it can happen to you. From that day, I started mocking them. I'm still waiting for it. <laughs> Don't make fun of rich people. It can happen to you. Tell your neighbor that. Don't make fun of rich people. It can happen to you. Somebody responding, yeah, it's happening to me already. I'm already rich. It's happening to me already. Are you hearing me, somebody? Please, I don't want to be rich without God in it. Seriously. You know what that does? Go back to verse 9. The harmful desire that plunged people into ruins. Let me tell you. Whenever you are engaged in pursuing this thing, to be rich by force and by fire, you lose sight of God principles and concepts. You will cheat to get it. You drop your morals and principle level. You begin to use God to make it. Not knowing God knows that you want to use him to make it. <laughs> God is not a little boy that you can lie to and manipulate and use for your own little desires. No, 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 no. You are manipulating God in the name of Jesus. You use him so he can help you, but you don't care about him really. God won't give you anything that will replace him. That's how much he loves you. This message is for us to redefine and realign our pursuit and our heart condition. It will plunge people into ruin and destruction. And the last, but before the last, reckless living is the other spring maker. Reckless means irresponsible, careless, thoughtless, hot-headed, hot-headed, hasty, unwise, reckless. Proverbs 14, 16 says, The wise person fears and turns away from evil, but a fool is reckless and overconfident. I have a good news for you. All the other time you think that you are going to make it, it didn't work. Can you not just learn from it? To realize that your overconfidence will not bring you anywhere. Settle the matter and be humble. And know you need God to make it on the top. 
And therefore, don't throw God on the second, on the third. Put God first. Don't be rich without God. Don't make it a throat up without God. As quick as you went there, as quick you're going to come down. Step by step, the bird makes its nest. You cannot build Paris in a day. Everything is done by steps. Sometimes we think somebody just wake up and because he was in the right place and lucky as he is, he becomes so successful. That's a lie. It's a deception. It doesn't work that way. These people that we can refer to, they went through so much you have no clue. They are waited in the pit, hoping somebody will have mercy to bail them out. They are waited in the prisons, being falsely accused sometimes. Sometimes they want to drop everything. Sometimes they doubted God if God was still around. Please don't look at the final result. There's a process to every success. Proverbs 21, 5 said, the plans of the diligent certainly lead to profit. Here's a business term, profit. But anyone who's reckless only become poor. You want to be rich by force, by fire? You drop down all your principle and core values? It will lead you to poverty. Those are things that take away our strength. And the last one as I close is your associations. The people you hang around with. What are the core values that regulate their lives? Are they like Esau? God said Esau was a profane man. Jacob didn't insult him. God said he's profane. Jacob didn't say that. He's profane. He does not know what is secret, what is holy, what is valuable. What is your surrounding? Who's instilling faith, motivation in you? Who are you hanging around with? Who's speaking into your life? Who's your reference? Who do you lean on when things are tough? Who do you call when you don't know when to turn and where to turn? Your surrounding will either lift you up or they will drag you down to the pit. That's a strength leaker. They drain you and drag you into pathway that dishonor God. Yet after when you come back to yourself, you think God should answer all your prayers, forgetting very quickly how you dishonor him. Second Samuel 2.30, those who honor me, I will honor. But those who despise me, I will treat them little. In this life, what you sow, you reap. You sign a contract by selling your future so that you can look amazing in the present. It's a matter of months and years. You will realize that you made a mistake and you will pay for it. Please, hear my heart. Hear the heart of God. Don't take an offense with it. But rather humble yourself. And know God is not talking to this crowd. God is talking to each one of us individually and personally. We are co-laborers with God. Not only to save people. 
We are collaborating with God so we can move forward to fulfill our purpose. We collaborate with Him together. But this all we do is waste, is leaking, scandering strength. What is left for you to fight the noble battles? What is it left in you to confront the unknown that will come your way regardless on which path you walk? It will come your way. What is left in you after you have scandering all your strength? After you wasted through corals, fighting nonsense stuff, through seeking and running after schemes of being rich and become somebody by any means necessary, by devaluing and throwing away God's principles. What is it left? No more strength to praise him. No more strength to believe him. No more strength to honor him. No more strength to represent him. Why? Because you wasted us. Let's stand up on our feet as we bow our heads. Second Chronicle 27, 6, as we are closing. If you can stand up, stand up, please. So Jotham became mighty because he prepared his ways before the Lord is God. He became mighty. He gained strength. He recovered strength. Nobility. Because he prepared his way. He put God first. He was not ashamed of God. He didn't feel like God cheated on him or ripped him off. He didn't feel like serving God is in vain. He did not feel like worshiping God is not a waste of time. He prepares his ways not one way, all his ways before the Lord. He redefined his family. He realigned his spirituality. He realigned his relationship with his wife and husband and the friends that God had put around him. He realigned. He readjusted. He recalibrated. He prepared his ways. Before the Lord. And because he, saw, he did so, God gave him might. God gave him power and authority. God gave him influence in the earth. God raised him up above all simply because he prepares his way. The Spirit of God is speaking to you this morning. Where and how have you been wasting your strength? Where? How? And how much of that strength you've been wasting? Uh, when we close our eyes, you say, Lord, you spoke to my heart, and I know I have wasted strength. I want you to come to the altar before the Lord for two things. So God can clean up and close the leak and pour strength in you that will not leak out again. Just come to the altar and let me pray with you. I don't want to run aimlessly anymore. I don't want to shadow boxing. I don't want to be beating the air. I don't want to quarrel anymore. I am withdrawing myself from such. Just come forth. There's more people coming. Come closer to the altar. Come closer. Thank you. And make room for the other. God bless you. I no longer want to quarrel. I no want to Give room to a full grace 
to come upon me. I don't want to waste energy. I don't want to waste wisdom. I don't want to waste my saliva. I don't want to waste my energy from my emotion to fight battles anymore. I don't want to make room to sin because of my quarrelsomeness. And Father, I want to stop chasing after empty dreams. I'm tired. It's you I'm talking to. Just come to the altar, please. Empty dreams. I don't want to fall in those snares of chasing after success without you. I do no longer want to compromise your values and your truth. Father, I'm done with reckless living. I'm done with being irresponsible, waster, thoughtless, hot-headedness. I'm done with such. Allow him to look into your surrounding. Don't sit in the pathways of the evildoers or the scorn, but be planted by the rivers of living waters. Father, today we look for a new start again. As we stand here before you to ask you to forgive us for all the leaking, all the wasting, all the squandering of resources, of strength. Forgive us, God. Even squandering our gifts, our anointings, falling into every type of traps. We cease with such living. We cease with such behavior. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, close the leakage. Grace each person today who have stand, who stand before you to close every leakage. Open their eyes to see the different ways and how they've been wasting and scandering their strength and gift and abilities. Open their eyes to see and that by your grace close the leaks. Bring a realignment to their heart. A realignment to their pursuit. Let every step be filled with purpose. Let every step be filled with meaningfulness. Let every step be filled with eternity in mind. Father God, we turn away from the path of destruction. We turn away from the wasteful path. We choose to run the race for which you have created us. We embrace the prophetic race, the prophetic journey for which we have come in the earth. We refuse to waste our life. We refuse to waste our days. We refuse, oh God. We channel it all to fulfill our destiny. We channel it all to be a blessing to mankind. We channel it all to show your love to mankind. We channel it all, Father God, to bring glory to your name. We refuse to waste. Father God, I pray that your Holy Spirit may begin to pour strength on the feeble knees, strengthen the mind, strengthen the hearts, strengthen the bodies, begin to pour a new strength, oh God. Begin to flood them with this river 
that refresh them. Refresh them. Open up their intellect. Open up their spirits. Open up their, their souls. The center of their emotion to receive a new strength from the Holy Ghost. As they have been waiting upon you, renew their strengths. For those who wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strengths. Uh, let them rise and cause them to rise like eagle, hallelujah, to higher heights, to top, to shine like the light that they are in their world, in their community, in their jurisdiction, oh God, that from today they will no longer be hidden. They will be set on the hill. Their voice will be heard because they will be charged with energy and strength in the name of Jesus. Their life will have a great impact. They will impact everything they touch because their energy and their strength will be channeled to fulfill the reason for which you have called them in the earth. Oh God, arise in them and let the enemies be scattered. Rise with them with a new strength. Rise in them with wisdom. Rise with them with understanding, oh God. Let your favor come back upon them. Let your favor be restored upon them. Let your favor come to their home. Let your favor come to their relationship. Let your favor visit their project. Let the project be lifted up again. Let favor lead the way. 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 Kaya la bada mandebolosa. Gran tolo que te caraca ta 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 ta. Arise and shine. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Your strength is restored. Your dignity is restored. Your honor is restored. Your ways are pleasing to the Lord. Might is restored. Come on, somebody, give a clap offering to the Lord this morning. Celebrate Him this morning. Yeah, yeah, yes, 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 Lord. Come on, praise Him with might. Praise Him with all your strength. Praise Him with all your mind. Praise Him with all your heart. Praise Him with might. Your strength is restored. Run the race. Run the race. Run the noble race. You will finish it. You will finish your race. You will finish your journey. You will accomplish. You will fulfill your purpose. Hallelujah. Worship. Stand here. Let's give a praise to God with might and with strength. And you go home with this message. If your wife was not here, preach it to them. If your husband was not, preach it. From today, you will remember how much God has given to you and you didn't know. Because when you waste, you always lack. You feel tired. Oh, I am tired. But when the leakage is close, you remind yourself and you realize how much you were given. Your strength becomes so powerful. Yet, it's because the waste has stopped. Can somebody give a clap offering to the Lord? Everybody, let's lift up our voice. Let's praise the Lord with the worship team. Thank you, Lord. Give us a praise. Let we celebrate God with a praise. Let's put our hand together. We are a chosen generation. You are the chosen generation. We've been called for to show. And we will show His excellence in the earth. All I require for life, God has given me. 